Good evening, and welcome to our Mass. Our Mass tonight is being offered for Charles and Mary Schlotman. Rest in peace to Mary and Zura. There will be no Mass on Monday or Tuesday of this week. <coughs> this week's second collection will be the building fund. And thank you to those who stay up for Sunday Mass and each week to sanitize the pews. Please just bring all surfaces. Let air dry. Do not wet dry. The offices uh, closes on Thursday at noon until 9 a.m. this coming Father Monday. Uh, please rise and bring Father Bell. <laughs> When they heard this, they were infuriated. 
and they ground their teeth at him. But he, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. They witnessed, the witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace, according to my word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword, will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, and having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were waiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome back James to spend the evening with Justin and I. It's good that James is home with us and now Justin has a little buddy to play with. Because <laughs> you know the old man just goes to bed too early. <laughs> On this day after the solemnity of Christmas, we celebrate today the Feast of St. Stephen, the proto-martyr, the first martyr of the Catholic Church. And at first glance, it might seem to us, why are we celebrating the death of a martyr, which is yesterday we were celebrating the peace and the joy of Bethlehem, and recalling this tragedy today of St. Stephen, where he was stoned in Jerusalem during the first persecution of this young church. And just to confuse you even more, those of you with the Sunday Missiles trying to follow along are confused by the opening prayer, was it what's printed there, by the first reading, is it what's printed there, and it's because even though today is the celebration of the Holy Family, the church who is named after a particular saint, is allowed to take precedence over the Sunday liturgy, which is the Holy Family. And so I thought it would be appropriate tonight just to remember St. Stephen. I wish to remember St. Stephen because we never really got to welcome all the parishioners from St. Stephen's that came over to join us the way that I wanted to. I wanted to have a very special liturgy, a very special welcome. We know that, unfortunately, due to circumstances beyond all of our control, and certainly the last thing on earth any priest wants to do is to close a parish, we found it necessary because of lack of parishioners, lack of people attending Mass on Sunday, lack of priests, 
lack of resources needed to keep that parish vibrant, St. Stephen's unfortunately had to close. And we close St. Stephen's in a very moving liturgy the second weekend in January. And we needed a little bit of time to heal, I felt, before we could have a welcoming ceremony. And at that time, still many people from St. Stephen's were up in the air, what they wanted to do. Some were angry, some were confused. Some came over to us right away, but I wanted to give it a little bit of time. And then came that trip, that retreat, that I was so excited about, to be able to go and pray at the tomb of St. John Vianney, the patron saint of priests. That was a very important part of my priesthood. Unfortunately, while you know that I was in France, the coronavirus blew up in Italy. And I almost didn't make it out of France. And I no sooner got home, and then our country went on lockdown, and we know from March until July, we were not having any kind of public masses. So I felt tonight would probably be the best night to remember St. Stephen. I said it's kind of hard or confusing for us, because just yesterday, you know, we were celebrating the peace and joy of Bethlehem. And now today, we're celebrating the tragic death of Stephen the very first saint of our Catholic Church, of our infant church. We know that he was stoned to death, preaching the gospel and living the value of Christ. But what makes him have this day as his feast day is the day that just like Jesus hanging on the cross, he prayed for his persecutors. He prayed for those who were hurting him. He prayed for those who were inflicting such hurt and such damage on the own church. Any time a church closes, it creates hurt. There's a lot of reasons. But we have to realize, just like Stephen, who was willing to accept the martyrdom of Jesus Christ to spread the gospel, we too, in the midst of our emotional and spiritual and physical hurt, pain, need to do the same. You know, we hear constantly on the radio, well, actually I'm surprised, I turned on the radio today and the Christmas music just stopped. You would have at least thought they would carry that on for two more days. But you know, all the TV commercials, it's the most wonderful time of the year. And you know, it kind of brainwashes us to think everything is going to be rosy. And everything's going to be perfect. And well, yesterday, you had tired people. There was probably an argument or two. Somebody went hungry. Somebody burned the turkey or burned the ham. People still got sick. People still got, people still died. Christmas is a time for us to remember the presence of Jesus, who through his death enables us to have a better life in the life to come. 
And that's what Stephen believed in. And even though because of the coronavirus, many of the folks aren't from the former St. Stephen's aren't able to be with us tonight. And yet, so many of them have come over to us, and I'm very grateful. Many of them have really done a lot of great things for our parish already, and I'm very appreciative. And we need to make them welcome. We need to make them a part of our parish family, because they are our family. And you know, it's one thing for us to say, oh, I'm a proud member of St. Clair of Assisi, and I'm a proud member of St. John's, and I'm a proud member of St. Pat's, and I'm a proud member of Holy Family, and well, I'm not proud anymore because they closed my church. We're still part of God's family. And God calls us to do that in the best way possible. We do celebrate the feast of the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And unfortunately, once again, I think we put the rose-colored glasses on and we think that Mary and Joseph never had an argument, that Joseph never had a worry about a paycheck, that Jesus was always that sweet, innocent child. I'm sure he got into mischief, just like every other healthy boy. It might not have been the perfect family in an earthly sense, or what we dream of, but it was a perfect family in the love of God. And so why we celebrate this the martyrdom of the first saint of the new church, we remember that we are church. And we'll have our difficulties and we'll have our problems. And we'll have our trials and we will have our challenges. But God's love will always be with us. As long as we're willing and able to recognize it and share it. And so we say, as Tiny Tim said, God bless us, everyone. I find myself at times always apologizing for things that I didn't do, but yet I feel because I am responsible, I need to. I apologize the parking lot lights are not on. I went down, oh, turn them on, and I find my keys don't work in the lock snap. <laughs> so uh, somehow the locks got changed, and uh, I'll have to correct that. Uh, but uh, I want to do want to thank you for all that you do for me and how you keep my priesthood going. <coughs> That's a very special moment. Let us pray for each other tonight, and let us I pray for you and your families as we pray to be that perfect family in God as the parishioners of Saint Clair de Sisi. Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The family of Nazareth inspires us to imitate the virtues of holiness and piety. With this ideal before us, we ask the Lord to hear our prayers on this family day. To the family of the church, that we may, be, that we may give respect and dignity to all God's children, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To the family, people, and nations, that the rights of the old and the young will be upheld for the sake of peace, justice, and harmony. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our families, that those separated from their family circle will find a home with God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Broken families, that God's reconciling forgiveness be granted and accepted to restore all relationships of love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, bereaved, special projects or events, especially for this evening's uh, Mass, which is offered sorry, for Charles and Mary Schwachman. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, by subjecting himself to Mary and Joseph, your son sanctified home life at Nazareth. As we offer our prayers, help us follow his example, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Argument number 342, wait from your sleep. Hymn number 342.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these kids, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of
Behold the Lamb of God, behold he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.